Hi, I'm Evan Johnson. I'm going to be doing my video journal for uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, so I wanted to start, obviously, with question one. Uh, what did I notice? And what I noticed was um, how kind of funny this play was. Uh, in high school, obviously, we had to read Basics, Romeo and Juliet, um, se several Shakespeare pieces that were somewhat, s well, they were tragedies. They were super sad and dark and humorless. And this kind of seemed to be seemed to be the exact opposite of that. Um, just the, the, it was actually obviously now it's not necessarily ha ha fan, funny nothing that we would really go crazy at. But um, at the time, I'm sure this was a very upbeat um, kind of uh, how would you say like uh, mischief like mischievous type of a play, and I think that appealed to a lot of Shakespeare's crowd. And uh, that's what I would notice, the, a, specific, a specific example of that being Puck uh, turning Bottom's head into that of an ass. And that'll tie into my answer for question three as well, um, because I wasn't sure what they meant by that initially. Question two, what values are being represented? Uh, so first, love, obviously. Um, Hermia faced the decision between Lysander and um, Demetrius, right? Demetrius is in love with Hermia, Lysander's in love with Hermia. Her father wants her to love Demetrius, but she loves Lysander. So it, given that, um, um, and, and also I'm gonna tie this into my second value being uh, the relationship between men and women and gender uh, and the, the social class that that affected. So the way that um, Hermia's father was uh, so expectant of her to follow his his rules of, of wanting her to marry Demetrius uh, and then offering that she would either be killed for wanting to marry Lysander or that she could be sent to a nunnery. Um, it just seems like she was an absolute object to the quote-unquote man of the house and um, that was very interesting and sad because I'm sure at the time period of, you know, when Shakespeare was writing this, maybe that was still kind of the way they, that it seemed was that um, the men ultimately had the final choice. Um, but yeah, just the, the fact that love was so intermingled in this play and how fluid it was, um, given that it was ultimately decided by these fairies just out in the woods, you know, on their own agenda but somehow still affecting humans' lives. Uh, question three, uh, what did I make a, a pencil mark on? It was an online text, so I didn't use a pencil. Um, but when Puck turned Bottom's head into a, that of an ass, I was very confused because modern day, I'm literally picturing a butt on somebody's face and I was confused as to why, I, I would say that it was probably somewhat obscene back then, that would probably be you know, beyond what they would consider to be their um, appropriate boundaries. Uh, but then when I found out that he literally turned him into, you know, gave him the head of a donkey, I thought that was pretty funny. And um, just interesting how they would add that kind of humor into the, the middle of the play. Question of four, um, how is gender depicted in the play? I already kind of glossed over this, but it's absolutely male dominated in this, whatever culture this was being written in. Um, the, the choices for um, Hermia were limited. It was either you, you marry who your father wants, you die, or we shun you and throw you into a nunnery. And her only option was to run away, kind of like um, a Romeo and Juliet type of deal. Um, but yeah, I would say that uh, what did, these depictions suggest about the play as a whole that it was 100% um, male dictated. The whole thing was written by men, probably had no female actors, but <clears throat> the entire plot was was dictated by men. Question five, uh, I can tell how the play was performed originally. How do you think this is affected? Um, right, so 
back then it would probably have been straight men playing all the parts. So that would have added humor to help most of the female characters, but more than that, it would gain even more humor in the scenes, you know, where the fairies were just messing with everybody's emotions, um, sending every person after every other person. The fairy god sending his wife to fall in love with Bottom, whose head was now that of a donkey. Just all these really men yeah, acting like they're in love with each other probably would have been very funny. Uh, question number six, two of my own questions. Um, okay, my first question would be, um, so I, I'm not a big Shakespeare person. Like I've read a few, but I want to know like how this ties into some of his other works, like whether or not he has a lot of other comedies that were very popular or are still that prevalent today. Um, and whether or not these, these similar themes, like changing animals and like people into animals, um, the, the magic, um, fairies and their existence, whether or not this was, is all very prevalent in other Shakespeare works. I'm just not familiar enough to understand that. And that's why I was so surprised by how much humor was in the play. Thank you.